Hello everyone, my name is Xu Chen. Uh, I come from Jimmy University. Uh, the title of my presentation is Reinforcement Recommendation with User Multi-Aspect Preference. Recommender system as an effective remedy for information overloading has been widely applied in a number of real-world applications, ranging from the e-commerce, social network, music radio, and health carrying. Traditional models usually solve the recommendation task within the uh, supervised learning framework. However, this framework cannot uh, handle the basically interactive nature uh, between the user and the system and cannot model user's long-term engagement. To alleviate this problem, recent years have witnessed the emerging trend of formulating recommender system as a reinforcement learning problem. While there are many RL-based recommender models, existing methods mostly focus on improving the agent or the environment. However, little attention has been paid to designing rewards for reflecting the user's uh, complex preference in realities. Existing methods usually regard the reward as a single value. However, we believe this is unreasonable uh, for real-world user preference. For example, in this picture, uh, user A and B both score item X with 5 ratings. But A is more interested in aspect D, while B likes more on aspect A. Only based on the fact that both A and B like item X, we cannot distinguish these users and accurately match them with the candidate item Y and Z, which may vary a lot on different aspects. Here is the uh, traditional formulation of IR-based recommender system. The agent is usually the recommender. The environment is the user. The state is all the items of a, uh, of a user. The reward is the rating of the user. The action is the recommended item. In each user, uh, in each environment agent interaction, the recommender firstly uh, recommend an item to the user. The user then responds the recommendation with a reward and uh, the state of the user has been changed. In traditional IR-based recommender system, the reward is usually uh, a single value. However, in this paper, uh, we would like to uh, model user more comprehensive preference on different item aspect. Thus, in this paper, we extend the, the single reward to a reward vector and each element in the vector is a user preference on an item aspect. Well, this can be a, a very promising direction because we can uh, model more comprehensive user preference. However, uh, user preference on different item aspects can be not always aligned with each other. For example, in hotel recommendation scenery, a uh, user may enjoy the room size and the environment. But this property makes the room cost more, which may lower the user's satisfaction on the price. So uh, in order to uh, reasonably define and learn our optimal model in such a scenery, we introduce the Pareto optimization into our framework. Here is a brief introduction of Pareto optimization. Suppose we have multi-objective L set. We firstly define the Pareto dominance concept. For two parameters, theta A and theta B, theta A is said to dominate theta B if and only if Li theta A is smaller than Li theta B for all I belongs to 1 uh, to M. For example, in the left picture, we can see we can say uh, point A can dominate point B. We can also say point C can dominate point B. But uh, between A and C, we can uh, not determine which one can dominate the other one. Based on the Pareto dominance concept, we define the Pareto efficient uh, concept. For a parameter set star, if there is no parameter set height, such that set height can dominate set, set star, then we say set star is a Pareto efficient or Pareto optimal solution. Okay, uh, due to the space, uh, due to the time limitation, uh, we here just uh, uh, briefly introduce uh, our model. Uh, the, our model is actually a, a DPG framework, and uh, uh, this is actually a actor critic model. Uh, the critic in our model is a multi-objective critic. 
and we have different critics for different objectives, and we optimize the Q function for each objective separately. After uh, learning the uh, Q function, we merge different Q function by weight WM, and we derive the uh, unified objective IL set. Here, WM is not predefined, and it's uh, learned by uh, by the following optimization problem, and will be changed in the uh, optimization process automatically. In the following, we will demonstrate why WM can lead to local Pareto optimization solution. The complete learning process of our algorithm can be uh, seen in algorithm one. Uh, to begin with, we initialize the actor parameter, the critic parameter, and the Pareto weights. In the training process, we first collect the trajectory and then uh, update the critic based on the trajectory. And then we update the Pareto weight after which we uh, learn the uh, uh, we finally learn the actor parameters. It should be known that here we do not introduce all the component uh, of our model. Uh, the readers can uh, read the original paper for more detailed architectures and uh, more details about the uh, supervisor regularization and so on. To see why WM can uh, lead to par local Pareto optimization solution, we have the following proof. Uh, from equal, uh, the key point is that we uh, revise the optimization problem into equation 10, and based on the KKD condition, we have equation 11. This equation tells us that the, the optimization direction is actually aligned with the gradient of all the Q functions. That's to say, if we optimize along the current direction, all the Q functions uh, can be gradually increased until we reach some point that uh, there is no other solution which can uh, improve all the Q functions simultaneously. Thus, we reach the local Pareto optimization point. While uh, optimization, uh, while the uh, Pareto optimization have very nice properties, but because of the introduction of WM. The gradient, by, uh, the gradient is no longer unbiased in our problem. And this theory tells us the upper bound of the gradient bias. From equation 9, we can see uh, uh, here x, y, and d are constant, and z is the batch size. From this equation, we can see if we use a large batch size, then the upper bound of the gradient can be lowered. But if we use a larger batch size, uh, it means we have to cost more a computational resource such as the memory of the GPU. So is there any measure that we can uh, uh, lower the upper bound without uh, increase the uh, by size? To alleviate this problem, we design weight reuse mechanism. Uh, the, the key point is design container. And if there is a candidate W star in the container side that it can increase all the uh, value of different Q function, then we just use this Weight instead of learning the optimal learning the optimization problem. In this scenario, uh, the bias of the uh, gradient is zero. On the other hand, if we cannot find such a weight in the container, then we have to learn the optimization problem. And in such a scenario, the uh, upper bound of the gradient is not zero. But overall, we have some chance to uh, to get some. Uh, to get some weight in the container. So the overall upper bound has been, uh, can be lowered. In the experiment, we are focus, we focus on three problems. The first one is whether our model can outperform the state of art method. The second one is how does different components in our model contribute uh, the final results. The third one is how different hyperparameters uh, influence our uh, influence our models uh, performance. From the overall performance, we can see on different data sites, NCF, EFM, and MA, TIF performs better than BPR in most cases, which is agree which agrees with the previous work. It's interesting to see that sequential uh, model gyro for Reich did not achieve super performance than uh, the non-sequential ones. Uh, encouraged by incorporating multi-objective rewards into the DPG framework. 
our model can achieve the best performance on all the data sets. The second experiment is about ablation study. In this uh, study, we are uh, interested in uh, the following questions. The first one is whether Pareto optimization is necessary. The second one is whether the weight reuse mechanism is benefiting for the performance. The third one is whether the supervised regularizer can improve the evaluation results. The fourth one is whether Q function and, uh, can lead to better actor optimization. The other two uh, uh, observe the uh, contribution of different components. We designed five variants. The first one is uh, PDPG with uh, random pooling. The second one is with average pooling. The third one is uh, without the reuse mechanism. The fourth one is without the supervised regularization. Uh, uh, the third one is uh, without the uh, Q function. From the result, we can see uh, average pooling and uh, uh, random pooling uh, 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 perform various on different data sites. Comparing with the final model, if we drop the weight reuse mechanism, the performance is lower than all the data sites. And uh, it's very interesting to see PDPG without reuse mechanism perform worse uh, than the fixed weight models. This manifests that the simple Pareto optimization method may not necessarily bring the impro improved performance. Uh, we speculate that uh, uh, this the reason behind this observation is the uh, but is the uh, gradient bias of the pro of the optimization uh, target. Uh, we can also see PDPG without supervising uh, regularization and without Q function can uh, cannot perform well uh, than the complete model. Uh, this result demonstrates that our uh, different components can can all. Uh, contribute the final performance, which should be uh, incorporated in the final model. Uh, at last, uh, the, uh, we experiment with the different uh, hyperparameters. The first uh, parameter is the uh, supervised regularization. Uh, we uh, tune the uh, weight of the regularization uh, with different uh, uh, with different preference vectors. We can see uh, when the weight is not too large and a lot not too small, the performance uh, can be better. The second uh, parameter is the batch size. We can see uh, if we use a larger batch size, the performance is usually better. This is aligned with theory two. That is, larger batch can lead to lower uh, upper bound of the gradient bias, which may potentially correct the, the gradient error and improve the model performance. The last parameter is gamma, and uh, we can see gamma can um, can be different. The optimal gamma for different can be uh, for different data set can be uh, different. Uh, for a uh, triple advisor and read beer, smaller gamma can smaller gamma can lead to better results. While on beer advocate, uh, moderate gamma is more preferred. This suggests that we should tune gamma in practice for uh, more carefully. Actually, this work, uh, actually this work, uh, uh makes a further step on, uh, the the reward saving for, uh, real world user preference, and uh, uh, actually there is much room to improve in the future work. For example, we can design more advanced weight reuse mechanism, and uh, uh which can uh, help to, uh, find the optimal weight efficiently.